I'm honored to be here for a number of reasons. First, because the state of Washington, under the leadership of Governor Evans, I think is generally recognized to be the first state in the nation in terms of trying to protect the environment. We congratulate the state, its governor, and its legislators. It is a great privilege to be here on this sparkling, beautiful day to speak about what this particular occasion means not only for now and the days ahead in this summer when I hope that hundreds of thousands and maybe millions will come to see it, but looking down through the pages of history perhaps to the year 2000, 25 years from now, when we celebrate a New Year's that comes once in a thousand years, and when we look back to see what we did now to make that a new year that was not only the greatest new year for America, but for every nation in the world. Today we speak of the environment in terms, as we should, of cleaning up the air and the water, of a legacy of parks, of all of those other things that have to do with making our cities and our towns and our countryside more beautiful for our children and those that follow us. Another aspect of environment that occurs to each of us, of course, is what this magnificent expo is going to leave as a legacy. It will leave, I trust, some of these beautiful buildings. It will leave a hundred-acre park in the heart of the city of Spokane, which was once a blighted area. These will be physical monuments to what you, the citizens of Spokane and the state of Washington, have done in putting on Expo 74. But beyond those material things, it will leave something else, and that is a new spirit. And what impressed me as I read about how this expo came about was that the idea did not come from Washington, D.C. It came from Washington State. Those who worked on it, those who conceived it, and most of the money that went into it came from the people and to the people of this state, we give you the congratulations for a magnificent achievement. <laughs> 